From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Welcome in, everybody. It's Fleet Week Friday. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Hey, let's get started on this Friday morning. A trailblazing model and a mentor of generosity and sweetness. But to me, she will be remembered as the most incredible grandmother. The final farewell for the legendary Senator Dianne Feinstein, remembered by world leaders, colleagues, and family in the city that she loved. It's hard because I grew up here. And so this is like my baby. Rising crime in Oakland brings an end to a business owner's dream. It's way hotter than I've ever experienced in San Fran. I've been here quite a few times and I, I'm shocked. The heat is here for another day. Jessica Birch has the full details in our first alert forecast. If you didn't see them, you might have heard them. The Navy Blue Angels have arrived ahead of the big Fleet Week air show, and we've got you covered for all the Fleet Week celebrations. Yo, just want to welcome the WNBA to the Bay Area. Look who is ready to welcome more basketball to the Bay Area. Details on our newest sports franchise. All right, welcome in, everybody. It's nice to have you. I'm Reed Cowan. And I'm Nicole Zalimis, and we are just hours away from so much. The word of the day is spectacular. Fleet <laughs> Week spectacular events. And we have boots on the ground, both Jess and Sean. We do. I'm Gianna Franco. It's going to be a wonderful, beautiful weekend with a lot of people out there. And uh, hopefully people get a chance to take their right. family. To see those blue angels. Take a listen. Oh, it is so powerful. The Navy's Blue Angels flew in a missing woman formation for Diane Feinstein's memorial, and they took to the skies for practice runs in San Francisco as they prepare for the big show. We're kicking off our Fleet Week coverage on this spectacular Friday. And joining us live now from Marina Green is our first alert meteorologist, Jessica Birch. Jessica, it is such a breathtaking view behind you, and it's going to be a gorgeous day for festivities. It's going to be such a gorgeous day for, I mean, the air show, the parade of ships, everything that San Francisco has to offer heading into this weekend. The weather is finally cooperating with us. We're seeing clear skies right now in the forecast. However, it is a first alert weather day. And I think I should start off by saying that because temperatures today, they are well above average. For our fleet week forecast, we are sitting in the 80s all throughout the afternoon today, all throughout the afternoon tomorrow. But look at Sunday. We cool down fast and then partly cloudy skies start to slowly roll their way in. It looks like it'll still be a great day for the air show, but nonetheless, it is a warm one for us. We are under a heat advisory issued by the National Weather Service. This started yesterday and it lasts until late tomorrow night for all the highlighted zones and counties on this map. Take it slow as we head into this afternoon. Hydrate now before you head out there this afternoon. Make sure you are wearing plenty of sunscreen if you are under those strong UV rays into this afternoon. And to add to that, just wear light clothing. It is going to be a warm day for us. And if you were outside yesterday, even for just like five minutes, you definitely noticed that. Look at this 15 to 20 degrees above average this afternoon. This heat wave is really packing a punch for many of us. Right now I'm wearing a jacket out here at the Golden Gate Bridge, but I mean within the next five minutes I could easily shut it. Temperatures this afternoon in San Francisco alone sitting in the upper 80s. And as we head all the way up into the North Bay, upper 90s this afternoon near wine country. So yes, it's a warm one for us across the Bay Area, but here's the good news. At least the skies are clear just in time for the Blue Angels to take to the skies and show us everything they got on top of all of our other air show pilots that we'll actually be highlighting during the shows this morning. So we'll keep you updated here out at the Marina Greens right now. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And it's actually, I just got a little breeze. It's actually a little warm now. Hmm, here it comes. Thanks, <laughs> Jess. All right, well, you know, with all of that happening with Fleet Week, it's going to be really busy with a lot of people. You're going to see a lot of cars headed into San Francisco, a lot of foot traffic as well. And we saw that gorgeous view of the Golden Gate behind Jessica. I'm going to show you another perspective. This is the roadways for anyone heading into the city right now. Friday light, safe to say, but look at that flag. They're blowing in the wind, and it just looks stunning right now. And it's going to be busy with those planes flying overhead. So you might get a little distracted. Definitely eyes on the roadway. I know it's tough. Uh, it's going to be fun, though. Baybridge Stone Plaza metering lights are on. 
on and you're back to just to be on that first overpass. So not quite to the foot of the maze, but expect to have busy conditions there as well for any of the routes heading into San Francisco and then along Embarcadero, Marina Green, Fisherman's Wharf, where a lot of the activities and the air show, the parade of ships will be taking place for Fleet Week. Public transit probably is a really good idea. That's going to be your best bet. You've got a lot of options when it comes to Muni, even though there are reroutes, they do have like the F Market and the Wharves Historic Streetcars. They'll be inbound and outbound switching directions to sort of help navigate everyone in and around that area for Fleet Week. And of course, we are all getting really excited. Can you hear it in my voice? Yes. <laughs> for Fleet Week over here. It's one of my favorite things. You bring the kids out just to see the Blue Angels as yeah. well and all the things that the Parade of Ships. Absolutely fun out there. Okay, so we're moving forward. We're going to talk to Sean Chittis, who's live on Marina Green. Good morning, Sean. Hey guys, good morning. I mean, one more chance to show off this amazing location, right? It is absolutely stunning. What a great place to see the sunrise. And yes, we are near Marina Green where a lot of the action is gonna be happening in just a couple hours. It's a great place to learn more about all that is here for Fleet Week. They call it the Humanitarian Assistance Village where you can learn about disaster preparedness, meet the people who do that right here in San Francisco. Of course, see the military equipment. And if you want to, learn about a career in the military as well. Let's talk about some of the big events that we know that are gonna be happening this weekend. Of course, the Parade of Ships, that's just a couple hours away. That will begin at 11 a.m. And then later in the day, the air show, which does last several hours and there are multiple acts to it, but a lot of people are gonna be looking forward to the Blue Angels so we want you to know that they are going to be on around 3 p.m. today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Also, there are tours of ships. Those return tomorrow and Sunday on multiple piers. And we want to highlight two ships that are here this year for Fleet Week. The USS John P. Murtha, that's a transport dock, as well as a guided missile destroyer. That's the USS Paul Hamilton. And speaking to some of the service members who were at Marina Green yesterday getting ready for the weekend, they wanted to share what they hope the public We'll get out of this weekend. Hopefully this is a good opportunity for all the civilians and local people to understand what the military can bring and offer to them in the future. If they choose to go this career or this route, it's a good opportunity for them to take a shot at. All right, so the neighborhood really waking up a lot of people already here, and they are going to get started officially at the Marina Green and that humanitarian assistance village at 10 a.m. They go till 4 p.m. today, tomorrow and Sunday. Guys, back to you. All right, Sean, it looks so fun down there, and there are so many great vendors to go down and get to know our first responders and the people who serve our communities and get to know your neighbor as well. John Chitness, thanks. We were just thinking about too, the boats maybe potentially being on the water as well. So maybe that's a good vantage point to check this out. So CBS News Bay Area is the official media partner for Fleet Weekend. We have you covered, and I mean it, from land, air, and sea. Today is a spectacular Friday, and we are going to bring you the Parade of Ships live at 11 a.m. with the Blue Angels live at 3 o'clock. So lots to look forward to today. Reed. All right, my friends. Well, one day after, some of the most powerful people in Washington eulogized Senator Dianne Feinstein, who loved Fleet Week, right? People all over the nation have really had this week to consider Congress and the impact of leadership and making inroads. Well, this morning, Congress is still without a Speaker of the House as San Francisco and the nation say goodbye to somebody who was known for reaching across the aisles to try to find solutions. Here's Kenny Choi. They came to say goodbye to a woman who broke glass ceilings in the political world. Millions of girls my age and long after me have grown blissfully free of the yokes our grandmothers wore because Dianne Feinstein wrestled them off. Longtime colleague and former U.S. Senator from California Barbara Boxer and the late Senator Feinstein paved the way for women to follow in their footsteps. Feinstein's began in the city by the bay. In San Francisco was the place that believed in her. Feinstein's roots made their way to the nation's capital as her command in negotiating rooms had an impact on a younger generation of political powers, including the vice president. In that room, there was give and take, substantive debate and problem solving. And that was quintessential Diane. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi spoke of Feinstein's personal touch. She cultivated relationships, bringing people together officially, personally, and romantically. You know that Diane was a matchmaker. She connected people with others, 
And during her time as mayor and supervisor of San Francisco, she made change happen. It's going to be a, a tough loss for San Francisco because whoever replaces her is not going to keep San Francisco foremost in their everyday thoughts. Well, members of the public, we know that you were not able to attend yesterday's memorial, so we have it. You can watch it on our website, kpix.com. Maybe see some of those moments and take one of the lessons from her legacy into your own life.